In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send MIDI signals to your M8 Tracker headless setup. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use the Deluge as a MIDI controller and my Albernic uh, RG353VS with a Teensy on the back running the M8 headless setup as my tracker. Uh, this setup is pretty simple. The audio out is going into the Deluge, which I will now set up as a monitor so it can monitor. So it should be able to hear. Click. Okay. And that's going out to my audio interface along with my voice. So first, to connect, get things connected, um, there's only one USB port on, on this device. Uh, depending on what you're running, you may have more. But uh, for me, I'm going to need a USB hub. This one, unfortunately, won't work. It has a audio jack, which means it acts as an audio interface. And it kind of just takes over. It uh, it has a conflict with the TNC running, which I believe acts as an audio interface. And you could probably get it working with some sort of audio routing software, but uh, I found that's far too complicated. I would recommend just getting one of these dumb, unpowered USB hubs. Uh, I have this old USB 2 one with a couple of adapters so I can work with the cables I have, and it works just fine. So first, I found that the order you plug this in can matter. Uh, I found that plugging in the M8 first tends to give better results. So that's what I'm going to do. And so let's just make sure that um, that's working before we proceed any further. Now I've got this little track set up. Um, I'm just going to load it just to make sure it's all set back to its defaults. OK, perfect. So now that that's working, let's get out. And we're going to connect the deluge into it. Now with the deluge, um, I tried plugging it in directly without this power cable and it was recognized but I couldn't get it to actually connect properly. I think for some reason you need the power cable. Um, if you have a deluge, make sure you have the right one where it's uh, center negative. Most power supplies are center positive and you'll fry the board if you accidentally do that. So let's get that connected. Okay, and get that cable out of the way. So you end up with a big mess of cables, but it does work. The software I have running on ArcOS to display the M8 came with this MIDI Connect script. There's a few different variations out there, so I'll, I'll try to find it and link it in the comments, but basically just run that. And on the screen, you should see the M8 followed by the Deluge. And the Deluge has several different, I think it's virtual MIDI devices or something, I'm not entirely sure. But it should be, you know, fairly lengthy description. If it's short, that means something didn't work and it recognized but didn't connect. Uh, you can pause the video if you want to read through what it says, but I'm fairly confident that's all set up correctly. So now, um, let's go back into my MIDI controller and I'm going to hit a note. And you can hear a sound just happen, which is great. So if we go to the MIDI settings, all the way down here, you'll see a list of channels, one through eight. And those map to the value below it, which is instrument zero for all of them. And I'm going to leave it on channel one. And I'm going to pick the synth sound. So it's working just fine. Now you might not be able to tell with this instrument, so I'm going to change it to this bass sound. And there's a bit of a flaw with this. Um, unfortunately, playing an instrument's not that useful because there's a delay. The signal from your MIDI controller goes into the device and it's translated and sent to the Teensy and then back to the display software. I think there's a delay from when the Teensy receives it and when the display software gets it and ArcOS can actually present it to you on screen and through the audio. It might not be apparent, but that's too slow to play anything with any kind of high tempo speed. Uh, maybe if you had a really long attack on a, on a swelling pad or something, you could probably play it. But unfortunately, that's not terribly useful if you intend to sync an external controller, either manually or you know, program it in with whatever you're playing on the uh, headless. However, that doesn't mean it's not entirely um, lacks use. 
Um, I haven't tried sending a MIDI signal out, so maybe that would not have that delay, uh, possibly, because maybe it goes through the USB and doesn't go through the display software. Um, that might be something I'll look at in a future video. But for now, I've only tried sending things in. So what I have found useful is using it to modulate. Now, on the community software of the Deluge, uh, you can change CC values over time. Right now, I'm just going to manually adjust it just to show that it's working. And if you're familiar with the tracker software, you can map them to something. So I think this is the fader that I want to map, but I'm just going to check. Yes. So if you can kind of hear that, that whistly sound in the background, that's the one I'm going to modulate. So now you hold down your, uh, I believe it's the option key. I know it's B on here, but <laughs> yeah, anyways, the left of the two. You hold that down, and now it's listening for a USB signal on, on whatever can be MIDI mapped. And you'll see assigned MIDI map. So that's how you know it's, oh, there we go, assigned MIDI map. So now if I change this fader, you can see that the value goes from zero all the way up to FF. And so if you have like, uh, I don't know, one of those MIDI twister things or whatever, that could be a good way to just have on the fly mixing available. Now we're gonna go back to the MIDI mappings and you'll see channel one, which uh, let's get out of that, channel one, CC000, CC000, the current value or the last received value anyways. And then you can map it to a, a useful range that useful range really depends what you're mapping it to, uh, but I know I don't want this fader to go any higher than E0. And so now I can go from all the way to 0 to E0, and if we go back to the fader, you'll see as I change it, it goes from 0 to E0. So it's kind of a nice way of taking the full range of whatever the CC value is and clamping it to whatever is useful to you in that moment. Um, I'm not sure all the different things you can actually map these to. Maybe just go, go read the manual or just give it a try if you're curious. I'm sure there's quite a lot you can map things to. But for now, I'm just going to show that this works. So you can't hear the whistle. And it slowly fades in. Now it's kind of not audible in the mix once it's down here, but anyways, you get the point. Now the cool thing is, depending on what device you're using, you could say modulate it over time. Uh, what was the command? Oh geez, I'm forgetting what the command is. There we go. Okay, that's pretty long. So if I go in, the Deluge does something kind of cool where you can kind of draw in your modulation for each of the individual things. I, I think that's a community feature, but anyways. So if I play, See, it's 0, 30, 71. Hit play. I can have automatic modulation over time. So you could kind of get two different devices in sync. Now, of course, there is that slight delay, but I think adjusting something like a fader or modulating something up and down with an LFO or whatever, probably you can get away with a lot with that slight delay, as long as it's not triggering a, a high attack note. Now, to make this even a little more useful, let's go back to the settings. You'll notice I hit play and play, which is not ideal. You can have the sync in set to transport. So when you hit play, your song can start. So if it's so as long as down here in song view, like if you had a long track, as long as the cursor is at the right spot, everything should just work out. Now, what if, let's say, your song modulates the, the tempo over time. Um, I'm not sure exactly what clock plus transport does. I'm gonna make sure they're at the same tempo, 130, 130, and I hit play. And it plays twice as fast. I, I need to go read the manual and figure out why that happens, but uh, the transport plus SPP, I don't know what that stands for, but it seems to keep things in sync correctly. And you can play to your heart's content, which is fantastic. So I found this to be just this bare little minimum setup is pretty useful for something like a generative track where each of the individual tracks or, um, oh gosh, I forget what they're called, chains, 
in the song are kind of dynamically creating things, but you might want to have things modulate over time and it's just easier to use an external controller like this where let's say for 10 minutes in my case, I might want things to slowly come in and out and have different parts of the song in and out, but just leave the M8 doing what it does best and just dynamically triggering things. So yeah, let me know if this is useful to you. Um, let me know how you plan to use it. Um, if you have any insight into what those that clock plus transport means, let me know. Uh, I, you know, I've only been playing with this for a month while I wait for my actual M8 to arrive in probably a few months. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is useful to you. Cheers. <laughs>